Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Dan. Michelle, have you ever had an experience where you were lost and you thought maybe your friends or your family didn't know where you were, but it turns out you weren't alone the whole time? Yeah, when I was a kid, I was riding a bus and I actually got off at the stop too early. So when I got off, I was freaking out because I didn't recognize my surroundings. So I started walking. But what I didn't know was that my mom actually saw me get off the bus and she came towards me. So the whole time I thought I was alone, I actually wasn't. Man, it's crazy how we can be so scared in our own perspective when things are actually fine in reality. I think sometimes we think that God forgets about us when things are difficult, but we're gonna find out that's not actually true in today's God story. Let's watch this. Did you know that it is physically impossible for a pig to look up at the sky? Hi, I'm Michaela, and it's nice to see you again. So today I want to share with you a story about a time where I wasn't feeling very good. So when I was in grade six, I went through a period of about six months where I was very sad all the time, and I didn't know what was wrong, and I kept crying all day, and I felt that God was so far away. And one night, when I was at my very lowest, I heard God speak to me and he said, read your Bible. So I crawled across the floor to my Bible and I opened up to a psalm. And in it, I felt complete relief. I felt God hug me and I felt this physical load get carried off of my shoulders. And I didn't feel sad anymore. And that brings me to today's big question, which is where is God when bad things happen? So today's question is a really heavy one. And I know that a lot of people ask this question. So today we're gonna try to find some answers with it. And we're going to be looking into Psalm 22. So the Psalms were primarily written by David. And you remember David, right? Shepherd, a musician and poet, and who eventually became King David. So David wrote the Psalm, and especially this one that we're looking at, Psalm 22, because he felt that God was distant and he couldn't feel God anymore. So let's read. My God, my God, why have you deserted me? Why do you seem so far away when I need you to save me? Why do you seem so far away that you can't hear my groans? My God, I cry out in the daytime, but you don't answer. I cry out at night, but you don't let me sleep. Poor David was feeling so alone. He felt that God wasn't there. David later goes on to say how he knows that God is ruling from his throne and that God is a righteous God, but he still feels so far away from him. Then he reminds himself of all of the ways that God has taken care of him since his birth. He asks God not to be far from him. And he reminds himself of God's truth, that he is king, that he rules over everything, and that he is a good and loving God. So even though David feels as though God is far away, he's not. David was calling out to God. And when we draw near to God, God draws near to us. So even though we might feel alone, in reality, we're not. God is always with us. And as we continue reading the Bible and learning more about God's story, we know that God came to earth, that Jesus came and lived with us. We know that he lived and he died and he experienced bad things. And so when we consider the question, where is God when bad things happen? We can actually see that bad things happen to Jesus too, so that we can see how much he loves us. Jesus was willing to go through extreme suffering so that we could know that God would do whatever it takes to show us that he loves us. In fact, on the cross, Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? Which is actually the first line from Psalm 22. And for anybody who was there, they would have known that Jesus was referring to the entire Psalm. And do you know how the Psalm ends? It's really cool. Let's read. All rich people of the earth will feast and worship God. All who go down to the grave will kneel in front of him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive will kneel. Those who are not yet born will serve him. Those who are born later will be told about the Lord, and they will tell people who have not yet been born, the Lord has done what is right. So check that out. Those who are not born yet will serve him. That's us, that's you and me. And that's so cool. And we will tell others, the Lord has done what is right. And this is it. Jesus died on the cross so that we could have a close and wonderful relationship with God. He has known our pain. He has experienced it and he's willing to take it on for us. So now for the question of why doesn't God make it go away? I can't answer that question. I don't know the answer. But what I do know is that when we are in eternity with God, there will be no pain. There will be no suffering and no tears. 
And I think that that is something so exciting to look forward to. And that's it for me today. I'll see you next time. Game time. Sticky situation. How many times can you say the keepers before things get sticky? Say it with me. Let us consider how we can stir up one another to love. Let us help one another to do good works. Hebrews 10, verse 24. Get ready. Three, two, one, go! I think we all can relate to feeling sad or alone when we're going through tough times, right? We all know how it feels when things aren't going our way. Yeah, but I think that's the time we need to push our feelings aside and rely on Jesus because he loves us so much. He went to the cross so that we could have a close relationship with God. Yeah, God is with us no matter what we're going through. Natalie and Jacob are at the campfire. Let's see what they had to say about this. Welcome back. Hope you had a great day today. We're back at the campfire and we have time for more questions. So what are you guys curious about today? Why do bad things happen? Well, here's the deal. God loves us so much, so much, that when he created us, he gave us something called free will. Okay, now I know that's a big idea, it's a big concept. It means that I can choose to do what I wanna do and you can choose to do what you wanna do. Now the tricky thing with that is that sometimes I make bad choices. And I'm gonna take a guess that you probably make bad choices sometimes too. Am I right? Okay, so when we call those bad choices often is sin. So because of sin, there are a lot of just bad things that happen in the world. And unfortunately, we don't know the answers for why all bad things happen, but I have a pretty good idea that a lot of the bad things that happen or as a result of sin in the world. Make sense? Where is God when bad things happen? That's a hard one. I know for me, I always feel like I'm really all alone when bad things are happening. But what we read in the Bible and what we experience is that God is with us when bad things happen. And we see this in the life of Jesus. When I think about this, I remember when I was in grade nine, my friend said, join the track team. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be so fun. And so I did, but we had to run every day. And it was so hard. And every day we'd run all through our neighborhood. It was exhausting and it was so painful and so hard and so difficult. And I was like, I'm gonna die. This is terrible. Why am I doing this? Why, why, why? And my friend who convinced me to join would run next to me the whole time. And he'd say, you can do it. I'm with you. I'm running next to you. Keep going. And that's what Jesus does with us. When we see him coming to earth, living a perfect life and dying on the cross, he says, I'm with you. I'm next to you. Keep going. You can do it. And that's what Jesus does. How can we help stop bad things from happening? Well, here's the truth, guys. I don't know that we can, but I think that all together, we can do two things. One, we can help one another go through the rough times, the bad times, and two, um, we can do actively kind and good things in the world. So, um, for example, remember earlier today when you guys were going through the lava river? Well, when you were going through the lava river, there was some crummy stuff happening. The lava, our, our pretend lava, of course. But you guys helped each other through. And that's exactly what we can do when bad stuff is happening for one another. We can come alongside each other and, and pray with one another and offer whatever help or support that we can and just be there for each other. 
And so, can we stop bad stuff from happening? Probably not in our lifetime, but can we be there to support one another and, you know, build into one another and do kind things into the world? Absolutely, we can. Guys, I absolutely loved your questions this time around, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're like next time. We'll see you then. I love how Jacob said that Jesus is with us even when things get hard. To use Jacob's own words, I'm with you, I'm next to you, keep going. Yeah, God is there even if we can't see him or feel his presence. But you know what? We as friends and family, we can pull together and support one another when things are at their most difficult. Well, it's time to break into our small groups and see what this looks like in our own lives.